20, uh, to February last year, but we're investing in 100 uh, new diagnostic centres in community hubs. I now come to the leader of the SNP, Ian Blackford. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I'm sure that you and the rest of the House will want to join me in celebrating and supporting World Cancer Day. Uh, Mr Speaker, just in relation to your earlier statement, I have a difficulty reconciling the Prime Minister's version of events with other evidence, and as you know, I have a duty to reflect and represent the deep, deep public anger with the Prime Minister. That said, Mr Speaker, I respect the absolute impartiality that you take in your role, and I want to set on the record that I respect both you and the authority of the Chair. Mr Speaker, this morning the Telegraph newspaper revealed that the Prime Minister attended a party in his flat on the 13th of November 2020. The Prime Minister previously told the House that no party took place. The police are now investigating this party and we face a very real prospect of a sitting Prime Minister being questioned under caution and being fined in office. And if he is questioned, Mr Speaker, he must go. If he's fined, he must resign. Mr Speaker, you'll agree that the House should not be treated with contempt. So can the Prime Minister... Uh, Here we go, here we go again. So can the Prime Minister update the House on his whereabouts on the evening of the 13th of November? Surely, surely, Mr Speaker, he doesn't need to wait for an investigation to tell us exactly where he was. Prime Minister. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, here we go again, says the, uh, the right honourable gentleman opposite, and I must say uh, that those are entirely my feelings. He asked uh, exactly the same questions uh, as I recall in the, or the, uh, in the, in the chamber uh, a few days ago. He knows, Mr Speaker, that the process must go on, but I can tell him what's been going on in Downing Street, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, in, in November and throughout, we've been delivering the fastest vaccine and booster rollout anywhere in Europe. Uh, we've been getting people back into work, Mr. Speaker. We've been getting people back, in, back into work, Mr. Speaker, and uh, we've been helping to bring the West together uh, to defy what I think is completely unacceptable threats and intimidation from the Putin regime against Ukraine, and that's what we've been doing. Ian Blackford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I mean that was a disgraceful response, and I have to say to the Prime Minister, he should read the room. And it should see some of the faces on his colleagues' faces. He has lost it. Mr Speaker, we've now reached the ridiculous scenario of a Prime Minister who can't even tell us where he was. He lives in a world where he thinks everything is owed to him. And he never pauses to think what he owes to the public. The Prime Minister is now a dangerous distraction at home and a running joke on the international stage. What does it tell the Prime Minister and the public that in the morning that he has returned from Ukraine, the chair of the Defence Select Committee has submitted a letter of no confidence in him? Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, it it tells me that it is more vital than ever uh, for the government of this country to get on with the job, deliver our Covid recovery plan, and that is what we are doing.